this right here may be the best camera of 2024. Now, I know that's a bold statement to make, but as someone who's been a videographer for almost a decade now, I've worked with so many different types of cameras and even action cameras, 360 cameras, and I love them all. Even the DJI Osmo series, I really enjoyed using those as well. Um, and I've even liked using action cameras as vlogging cameras because the portability and the size and the fact that it's such a wide angle that you're able to crop, I've always liked those kind of features. But no matter what, I've always found myself not using those as much as I wanted to, mainly because no matter what, I always had to get a tripod and then a microphone and some sort of case to go around it. And it made the small little package that I wanted so much clunkier to where I didn't even want to have that around in public with me. And then sometimes I found that the footage didn't even look as good as I wanted to, mainly because I couldn't really see what I was doing on the camera or the features that were on the camera weren't the best. And after using so many cameras for the last few years, I haven't really been excited about cameras in a while until this little thing came out. Now, a few weeks ago, I found myself watching a Peter McKinnon video actually reviewing this camera. This exists in its own class, and that's why it's sick. It's an exciting time for cameras like this, an exciting time for action cameras, and Insta360 continue to plow forward and innovate with products like this. And he was showing off one of Jesse Driftwood's videos where he actually made the promo video for the Insta360 Go 3S. And I'll add a clip right now. It's really mind blowing. If you want to go watch the rest of it, it's on Jesse's channel. But after I saw this, it made me just want to buy this camera. And then actually I went on Jesse Driftwood's YouTube and he has a video where he actually reviews it himself. And he shows a clip with him and his daughter. And after having our second son, I really wanted to capture more memories with my cameras. But again, I'm using the Sony cameras, got my zoom lenses. It's always big to carry around. And like I said, when I'm using other action cameras, it doesn't really feel as portable as I want it to. And so now every now and then I just kind of use my phone for photos or for videos. When I saw this, I thought to myself, this may be the very thing that I've been looking for as a videographer who wants to create more videos but not have to worry so much on the back end. You know what I mean? Now, if you want me to make a more in-depth video going into how I like to use it for more of a cinematography look and what kind of settings I like to use on it, comment that below and remember to subscribe because I may be working on a video like that. One of the first things that I've really liked about using this camera is that it's so easy to use. Now, when I talk about ease of use, what I mean is things like this. So if I wanted to go from 1080p to 4K, I just click on this. And then I have all my resolutions right here. So I can go from 2.7K, 4K, and then my frame rates are right there. And so anytime I want to change on something or switch things up, I can do it very, very easily. Stabilization, I could turn it on and off right here. Also, you have your different camera options right here, your narrow view your D-Warp, Ultra, Mega, and Action. So again, and it even describes and lets you know what each one is really used for. So it also teaches you as you're using it. Therefore, it makes it much more easier for you to use. The other thing if you want to do, if you want to zoom in, you just hold down the 1X, and then you could actually zoom in and zoom out, which again, you could just switch your cameras, your camera angles up and use them for a little bit more of a cinematic feel if that's what you're going for. Now, another great thing, again, makes it very easy to use. All you have to do is use swiping to get where you need to go. So you can swipe up, you have your resolution and your camera settings right there. You swipe on the right hand side, you have your auto and you also have your manual. You know, this is also really great for ease of use is just kind of even switching things up to where you want to or have everything set up on auto. If you switch over here on your left hand side, this is where you can review your camera footage. And then if you swipe down, that's where you get to your other different settings. So this is very, very easy to use and even to navigate and to maneuver to where you really don't need much. And then again, using the camera is also very easy to where everything is just right here for you to use. So you don't really need much more than this, right? You have your camera right here. You actually have your monitor that 
flips up as well. And then you have your camera that also detaches. So everything you need is actually housed in this one place. And that's what I like about it so much is that you have so much going on in such a small, tiny package. Another thing by what I mean of with ease of use is even the way that the camera connects to the app. So one of my biggest gripes with GoPros is using the app makes it even more difficult to use a GoPro. And that's one of the reasons why I never really use them anymore. And so connecting my phone with the Go360 or any Insta360 product is super easy. And that's one of the reasons I really like using them more than anything is just the way that they work together with the app or each other. So connecting my phone app with the Go3S is so, so easy. And all I do is connect it via Bluetooth. But yeah, so now my phone is being used as a monitor rather than this monitor. So that's a good thing to know. So when you use your phone as a monitor, you're going to be kind of blacking this out. So it would be great if they gave you an option to where you could use a monitor for something else, maybe monitoring the audio or something like that. But like I said, using the app is so, so easy that if I'm trying to white balance, so there you go. If I'm switching things up to the camera settings, everything is right there for me. Here, interval, star lapse, and we'll talk about that as well. So alongside with how easy it is to use just with the device itself, it's also very easy to use with the mobile app. And having a product that you can use on your phone and also by itself is very, very important because, hey, sometimes there's, there's times where I like to just go out without my phone, without my stuff, because it's like, I don't want to be bothered and I don't want any noise around. So knowing that I can take this with me and it has everything covered and I can navigate it, maneuver it without having to use an app is so great to know. But also if I wanted to use this as a second or third shooter, shooter, knowing that I can use my phone as a monitor is great, but also the fact that this can detach itself and then you could also use this as a monitor is one of the things that makes it so mind blowing to me. Now, one of the other things that I really enjoy about the Insta360, apart from all the great features that it has, like every other great Insta360 product, like the hyperlapse, time lapse, even the slow motion to me looks even better than what I've seen in other Insta360 products. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy about it is the freeze frame option or the free frame option. Now this allows you to have the camera either set horizontal or vertical, and then you can actually mess with the aspect ratio post also, if you didn't have the stabilization off, I think I think it turns it off where you can't have it on, but you could actually add the stabilization in post as well. So for me, having the free frame on has allowed me to capture content where I can use both in 16 by 9 and 9 by 16, which again, in nowadays in social media world, you always need. So it's really great to have both ratios being captured in one, even though it's not a full 360 product, uh, you're still getting the ability to kind of maneuver and mess with things on the back end which I love about Insta360 products. And really the last thing that I love about this is just that it's an all-in-one camera. So if you're someone who's a vlogger, you're someone who's a videographer who really wants to use another tool to kind of separate your cameras from everything else, you want something that gives you a different perspective. Again, that's one of the reasons I really love using drones is because drones gives you a whole different perspective than just handheld videography. Well, that's one of the main things I really like about this camera is that it gives you so many different types of way to use your creativity to say, okay, what kind of angle can I get? Or even using this for BTS. I thought it's really cool. I just uh, recently filmed a whiskey event and it was really cool having this attached to my camera or even to my person. And I could actually use this as a BTS type camera to where it's not something big. It's not something clunky. It's not something that's weighing me down. Actually, it's something that's allowing me to even be more creative post. And so that's another really uh, big thing that I've enjoyed about it as someone who wants to kind of create more than just the videos I have in the past, this gives me a way better uh, usage of my creativity. Um, the other thing is, yeah, if you're a vlogger, this makes it so much easier to vlog because you can actually use the pendant that you put on and then it magnetically clips to you. Or like um, you could actually use a hat clip to where you're able to just kind of clip it to your hat and then you walk around. Um, so there's different ways of even using this to where you, you don't need the whole camera body with you. You could actually just use the camera itself and then do more freehand type vlogging, which I think looks really, really cool in today's social media age. 
if you're somebody who's a cinematographer, if you're somebody who is a creative and you're like, man, how can I use this to get a more nuanced shot and just add more creativity to my already cinematic uh, style? I think, again, the fact that this can shoot in a flat log allows you to kind of add your color post. And so you're able to kind of mess with those colors in a different way. And that's another thing that I've really enjoyed about this is if I want to use it on a job later on, I can actually use this footage and color grade it to the things that I have from the Sony cameras I use or other types of cameras that I use. So again, those are all the features that me personally, as somebody who has been a videographer for almost 10 years now, somebody who's been an influencer creator for, for a few years now, uh, when it comes to camera and when it comes to gear, um, I haven't really been wowed by much, right? For me, it's like, how can I use this to be more creative? How can I use this to be different? And I feel like so many cameras that are coming out don't really give me that, you know? They kind of have some more bells and whistles, but ultimately they all do the same thing. So when the Insta360 Go, yes, this little thing right here, when the Insta360 Go came out, I thought it was so revolutionary and so different that I think it set it apart from so many other cameras that are going to come out in 2024 that again, fits the whole demographic of vloggers, creative, cinematographer, or even somebody who is just your everyday, I just want to make memories with my family and capture them. You know, the fact that this has an app that can edit those kind of videos for you to where you just kind of capture things on your own, then you upload it to the app and then the app edits everything for you. And then you're able to share that memory with your friends and your family. Again, uh, those are the things that really made me want to buy this camera and it's really made me excited about using this camera about taking it out with me because it's not such a big thing as beyonce said if you like it then you should put a ring on it well i'm saying if you like it then you should put a case on it and so i got this case for the insta 360 that allows you to store the entire thing in it it's not too big and then i also got these nd filters i got the nd8 1632 and then a CPL and I got this case that honestly I could take this anywhere with me and it's not going to be so noticeable and then I have everything that came with it which is a lot of cool stuff so if you're going to purchase it go for the 128 gigabyte uh, one just because you're going to want to capture so many things with it and I think it's only an additional $50 so it's more bang for your buck trust me that's what I would do um, and that's actually what I did. So yeah, so I highly, highly recommend this for anybody. And I've been talking about it nonstop, which is why I'm making this video. But those are just my thoughts on the Go 3S. If you guys have any thoughts about it, make sure to comment that below and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace out.